In this Throne and Liberty video, I will explain to you everything you need to know about the skills within this game which are tied to your weapons. We will talk about leveling, how to unlock and upgrade and much, much more. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and I'm giving away 1000 plus Lucent. Now to win it's as simple as this, drop a like on this video, leave a comment down below and make sure you are subbed. Winners will be picked from the comment section and announced in a few days, so good luck everybody. So this is a guide for new players to the game, hoping to give them a simple understanding of the way skills work in this game, how you progress them, level them up, equip them and so forth. So there's a lot going on here in regards to your skills, so I'll try and make this as simple as possible. So your max level in the game in regards to locking all skills is a level 50. As you level up you unlock more skills. Now skills in this game are tied to individual weapon types and there are 8 weapon types here. So this means there are 8 different sets of skills you will unlock as you level up. Now whether you have said weapon equipped matters not as these skills unlock with your level, they're tied to your level. No matter what weapon you're using, if you reach a level 50, you'll unlock all skills upon all weapons. So going into your skill tab, you will see this screen here, which can be daunting at first, but it's quite easy to actually understand once you get the general gist of what's going on here. At the bottom of the screen are the skills you will see showcased on your hood as you're playing the game, with the ones on your right side being the passive skills. So these sections here are skills that you can equip and use. By the way, there's also three different quick slot sets that you can easily switch between on the fly if you want to save a certain few setups of different skills that is. Now my equip skills here are ones I've selected from the two sections above. Uh, the two sections above are skills which are only available here because of the two different weapons I am using. Skills in this game like I said are linked to weapons. So if you use two different weapons here than what I'm using you'll see completely different skills. I'm right here using a longbow and a sword. Now if I switch up one of these weapons, let's say I put on daggers, you'll see that the skills here will now change to skills that go with and use on those daggers. But unless I equip said skills to my active skills, I won't be able to use them. So switching out weapons, uh, although it's something many will do, remember to change your skills at the same time or maybe even create a different quick slot set for the different weapons you plan on using or switching to. You will also see with the different weapons you choose also come different defense skills and passive skills which you will have to equip upon changing weapon. Now I've seen so many people stay that they have all of a sudden cannot roll or dodge. This might be due to you starting out with that great sword and then switching this out for another weapon and then not changing that defense skill to the one that comes with your newly selected weapon that you're now using. So make sure you do this. Defense skills do offer different things too. And although you may main let's say one weapon but also use the defense skill from that second weapon you have equipped. Now on the right hand side of the screen here we have passive skills which also do different things which are basically always active. And although there's loads on offer here, you are limited to how many you can apply at once, especially early on, with a total of 8 passive skills available for you to select once you reach a level 40. Now once you hit a level 50, which won't be for now uh, if you are a new player, it means you can dedicate all your 12 skill slots to a single weapon, that's something you want to do. That's actually something I'm aiming to do because I love the longbow in this game. Uh, that's going to be my main aim, uh, with my second quick slot set dedicated to both weapons and then my third slot being dedicated to that second weapon I'm using. That's how I'm going about things. Now in regards to these skills, all can be leveled up in different ways. Now the game will teach you about the skill growth options as you are playing here, but to keep it simple, those quality active skill growth books are used to level up your active skills and defense skills, and then you have the quality passive skill growth books which level up your passive skills. Now the game actually teaches you this and all about these as you firstly play, but how do you get these? How are these acquired? But that's actually quite easy to find out too, because hovering above said item, then pressing in that left thumbstick, then pressing in the required button to find out how to acquire these, you will then guys get a list of various different tasks and objectives that once you complete them, 
you get these. That's how they're obtained. Selecting anything from this list brings up the codex uh, where you can see what you have and haven't done here in regards to the objectives which reward these. Now I will say this though. When you have them, use them wisely on weapons you are sure you're going to be using. I don't think these are materials that you can easily throw around. And this is the same format used for all skills here. You can do the exact same thing and find out how any of these growth books are obtained. Now as a new player, you may notice on the left hand side of your screen, you will see that transcendent skills. These are vastly different skills used for group play, with only one person in a guild I believe capable of using it. A few details I found on the web which I believe will help so I'll read them off and hopefully explains what you need to know. Transcendent skills are a special category of skills. They are tied to various rankings of the game. Each major ranking category in Throne of Liberty offers a unique skill and affects the world around the caster. Unlike other weapon skills, only the number one player in each ranking has access to transcendent skills. This makes them quite important for group gameplay and guild versus guild competitions. Now, Depending on the available skill, you can boost the efficiency of your group and guild members when doing PvE or approach a hostile force unseen in PvP. Transcendence powers are valuable for coordinated group content and can change the way you experience the game. You can use these skills in order to complement your powerful builds in Throne and Liberty. So yeah, I hope that explains to you what Transcendence skills are. Okay, so moving on. Now you may have also noticed that there's a skill specializations tab. This is another form of upgrading your skills, but here you use things called skill specialization points. Now with these you get them I believe at most of your levels as you level up. Uh, I think you start with 10 and as you make your way up those levels you start getting rewarded 2 per level and then I believe towards that level 50 you get around 3 per level. Now once you have these you can then use them in upgrading each individual skill in a variety of different ways. Now you can, it seems, refund these skill specialization points to use elsewhere if you stray away from a certain weapon or weapon skill you've already spent them on, or if you just want to experiment with other things, which I believe is a very, very cool feature. But yeah, depending on the weapon you're using here, um, there are a variety of different skills as you know that you unlock as you level up to a level 50. Each individual weapon skill here can be further upgraded to make it more powerful, offer you more towards your build, etc, etc. So it's very, very important guys, you look into what you're spending these on here. Although you can refund them like I said, just don't waste them willy nilly. Simple as that. Okay, so lastly guys, you may also probably notice that there's a weapon mastery ranks that you can apply to your weapons. Now, this isn't something you will experience real early on, but it's good to know the details on what these are. So how do you get these? Well, well firstly, selecting this brings up a whole different skill tree kind of thing for selected weapons. Uh, and weapon mastery points are used in unlocking these extra benefits for your weapons. We've also three different sections here you can build in two. But what are these mastery points and how do you get them? Like I was about to just say. Well, because I'm yet to actually have any at this stage in my early game playthrough, uh, I've collected a bit more information from Google here. So as far as I'm aware, the easiest way to get weapon mastery points is by defeating enemies in open world dungeons. But you will also need abyssal contract tokens to earn weapon mastery experience. These tokens will be deducted each time you kill a monster inside said dungeon. Abyssal contract tokens can be obtained by completing contract missions from contract managers found in major towns. Also, you can use Training Do to increase Weapon Mastery. It instantly grants 10,000 Weapon Mastery to both weapons you have equipped. The best place to farm Training Do is again in co-op dungeons. You can farm dungeons of any level as long as you have the Dimensional Contract tokens, starting with the level 20 Spectre's Abyss. These dungeons also drop blue and purple gear, making it a good way to improve every aspect of your build. Training dues do have a 24 hour timer on them after you collect them, so make sure you use them straight away, otherwise they disappear. 
But yes, guys, that is what we know about weapon mastery points. It's quite a simple system once you get to the later stages of the game where you can enter dungeons with your guild, your teammates or whatever and start actually farming for this. It's another way of upgrading your weapons, making you even more powerful. So yes guys, a lot to get used to in regards to skill progression here. And while I really hope this video helped you out, I know a lot of players coming into this game will be overwhelmed when they see the skill menu because it is quite daunting like I said. But again, I hope this helps you out. Also check out my channel for even more Throne and Liberty guides for new and beginner players. On that note guys, the end of the video has arrived. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps me out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully, guys, I will see you on that next one.